On today's Big Deke News, we have a fake trade idea to talk about. Also, Colin Coward has a take on the Steelers that has a bunch of people unhappy. Big Deke News. The guy being mentioned in potential Steelers fake trades is Washington Commander edge rusher Chase Young. Was the number two overall pick in 2020. One defensive rookie of the year, a former pro bowler, but in recent seasons has had some ups and downs with inconsistent play and injuries, which is why the commanders haven't picked up Chase Young's fifth-year option. And just yesterday, reports popped up that the commanders are now open to trading Young. So obviously, you know the drill. Big-name player becomes available. Steeler fans, we ponder. Should the team trade for him? And in this case, it seems to be a mutual affinity between the player and the team slash organization. I don't never want to lose enough games to get a guy like you. You know what I mean? Yeah. And I yeah. play against you all the time. Because you got to lose 14, 15 games to get a guy look like you. Dang, that's a great throw, isn't it? <laughs> I, thought I thought that was you, Jason. Me. I know, I saw you dropping yeah, it. You I didn't, what are you dropping in the coverage for? <laughs> Blue toy, The case for the trade is you just bring in an uber-talented dude, period, who has yet to scratch the surface of his potential. He would automatically be in a rotation with T.J. Watt and Alex Highsmith, and opposing offensive tackles would be absolutely screwed. But the case against the trade is the Steelers addressed the edge rush position pretty well this offseason. They just brought in Marcus Golden and drafted Nick Herbig in the fourth round. And you figure Chase Young is going to cost. He has a $10 million cap hit right now. I don't know how much the Steelers would have to take on if they were to trade for Young because I can't find that information out there anywhere. I know what the commanders would have to deal with. It'd be like a $5 million split between cap savings and the dead cap, but I don't know what the new team would have to take on. And would also cost from the standpoint you'd have to give up a draft pick. I don't know how high of a draft pick that would be. I don't know what his market is right now. But all that would be for a one-year rental because there's no shot in hell you're going to be able to pay Chase Young after this year in addition to all the other young guys that we're going to have to pay on this roster for the years to come. So at the end of the day, the percent chance of this happening is slim to none. Would I make the move? Uh, I'll just tell you this. If we do happen to get Chase Young on this 2023 Steelers team, I'm not going to be hating. But now let's get to this Colin Coward take on the Steelers and their team-building strategy. Here's what he had to say. This is what I say. They can't fix their own line. Either can Pittsburgh. What do they have in common? A defensive coach. Do you know the four teams in the league that lead the NFL in spending money on their defensive side? Chargers, Bills, Seahawks, Steelers. All four defensive coaches. Last five years, they're 6-12 and 12 in the playoffs. Eight years, they've missed the playoffs completely. For the record, Kansas City a couple years ago scored 42 on that great Sean McDermott defense. So when I put my NFL Super Bowl teams in the bubble, there's a reason it's mostly offensive coaches. Okay, so he definitely got one thing wrong here. The Steelers and their offensive line not being able to get it right. Yes, our O-line has not been optimal over the last probably like four or five years, but it's not like it's something we've avoided because we definitely addressed it last offseason and it felt like we got things right towards the end of 2022 with that position group. And it's only going to be better for 2023 with the Isaac Samalu pickup and also with us drafting Broderick Jones. But his overall view that the Steelers are spending too much on defense and this is the wrong way to go about things, I disagree with because I don't think that's going to be the case as time goes on. We just have a bunch of young talent on offense that we don't have to pay immediately because they're on rookie contracts. So I just feel like this is naturally where the team is right now and we are able to afford a good defense. And why wouldn't you? go about it that way. Like I just talked about, we addressed and allocated resources into the offensive line, but outside of them, we have a lot of young players. Like, who do we got to give these second-year contracts to right now? The only guy is Deontay Johnson, really. You got Pickett, you got Fryermuth, Najee Harris. We just drafted George Pickens. We just drafted Darnell Washington. Like, we got a lot of young guys in that room who don't need to get paid just yet. 
So you have all this extra money. What are you going to do with it? You got the offense taken care of because you spent a lot of resources in draft picks and having young players. So you got money. Why not load up the defense? It seems like common sense. It's called having a young quarterback on a rookie contract strategy. It's been done many, many times before and has been talked about many, many times as, hey, this is a really good window to win a Super Bowl. If you have a good young quarterback, you have a good defense, you have a good roster, you got a chance. And that's what the Steelers are doing right now. So I don't know why Coward's critiquing this. Is it just because we haven't had as best of success as we would have wanted over these last four or five years? I get it. I think we all would have wanted more. But where the team is right now, I think we are perfectly set up not only for 2023, but also for the future. What I find funny, though, too, is the Bengals are basically doing the same thing, or at least they have been doing the same thing over the last two or three years. We're just in the earlier stage of the process, but you don't hear coward shitting on them because you got results. Like, that's the thing for this Steelers team. We got to get results in 2023. Let's see it actually work out on the field, which I believe is going to happen. But think with the Bengals. They got their young quarterback. Uh, they've had a shaky offensive line, been trying to address it as the years have gone by. Got a young, uh, I guess, just offensive weapon core and like T. Higgins, Jamar Chase, and Joe Mixon. Who do we got? George Pickens, Deontay Johnson, Najee Harris. I think we got some better depth, though, too. I know they have a Tyler Boyd. But to think we have a Najee Harris, a Jalen Warren, think of the tight ends that we got and Pat Fryermuth, Darnell Washington, Connor Hayward, Zach Gentry. So, like, you could see how the formulas are similar and the Bengals have spent on their defense. But that's the thing I feel like the Steelers organization has done and will prove to do better is I think we've spent better on our defense. I think our defense is going to be a lot better than what the Bengals have been over the last, like, year or two. Because now they're at the point where they're not able to start bringing back players. They just lost Jesse Bates to the Falcons. So I feel like the Steelers are on an awesome trajectory. Uh, I think it's just, in a way, just playing the results. We haven't had, as I mentioned, the best of success over the last like four or five seasons as we would have wanted. Because what's funny is, remember back in the Killer B days, we spent a lot of money on offense, but what were we com complaining about then? We need a defense. We need a defense. The defense is holding us back from getting to that next level. So I feel like this type of stuff goes in waves and you could just take any team that hasn't had the Super Bowl success that they would have wanted um, and probably nitpick certain things as to what's going on because I feel like the Steelers roster construction right now is the last thing anyone should be worried about. Omar Khan has killed it. I think we're set up so well for the now, but also in the future but that's my take on this uh Colin Coward perspective on the Steelers I just think I think he's off now we do got to prove him wrong here like we got to prove him wrong in uh 2023 and going forward but I feel like a lot of us do have confidence in this team but let me know what you guys think um about Coward's take but also um what else did I talk about and the Chase Young trade uh let me know uh what you think about that is there any chance that that happens. Uh, I don't think so. I, I really don't think it's going to happen. But again, I wouldn't be opposed to getting Chase Young on this team. But stay chilling. I uh, hope you enjoyed on a Wednesday and peace.